So this is a class eight um, heavy duty fuel cell electric um, truck. So this is a zero emission truck. So the hydrogen fuel cell basically takes hydrogen out of the tanks and back, oxygen out of the atmosphere, makes electricity and water. So when we go get outside of the vehicle, you can see it's kind of wet uh -huh. underneath. Um, basically water drips it's out. Just draining out straight down. Um, but no CO2, no carbon monoxide, no nitrous oxides, anything like that. So um, basically exactly the same as a battery electric vehicle uh -huh. would be, except it makes the electricity on board so you don't have to go charge. It basically does that for you while you're while you're driving. So this truck at a fully loaded 82,000 pound combined weight will do uh, over 300 miles on a single uh, fill up of hydrogen, which can we can refuel in about 15 minutes uh -huh. uh, uh, on the current. And, uh, and what's the hydrogen storage capacity on this one? This is 60 kilograms. 60 kilograms, okay. So 60 kilograms will get you about 300 miles? Uh, with fully we'll loaded? Fully loaded, right. Yeah. So, I mean, most people aren't fully loaded. Uh -huh. So, you know, you're going to get 350, 400, whatever miles out of it, depending on where you're driving and what the cargo is. Okay. Now, in this one, I was looking at it earlier. Um, I noticed there, you know, you don't have the motor um, installed at the rear axles. Where, where is the motor the installed? It's basically in? right underneath that hydrogen cap. Oh, okay. There's two electric motors, and then there's a four speed transmission that are right down there. And then okay. you just drive the back. You could make a. Uh, a truck like this with e-axles or something right like that. yeah that's what i was thinking you're kind of like building the whole truck from scratch mm -hmm. the benefit to this kit and to this system is it allows an existing truck maker to drop this platform into their you know an existing to drop this kit into an existing platform they don't have to redevelop everything so they can get zero emission trucks on the road very quickly and then in parallel we're working with them for next generation systems that you know integrate uh -huh. uh, more of the electrical platform functionality. And roughly what is the full system weight of the stacks, the electric drive, and the, the hydrogen storage? Um, well, we haven't published that specifically, but it's fairly comparable to what a diesel truck would be. Um, okay. It's, it's a, a little bit more, um, but the advantage to a zero emission vehicle is the like where we operate in the state of California, uh, the state gives you an extra 2,000 pounds if you're a zero emission vehicle. So normally you're 80,000 pounds. Uh -huh. um, as a zero emission, we can do 80, 82,000 pounds, and that okay. basically makes up for the difference in the in the mass of the system. But it's far less um, heavy than a, than a battery electric. A battery electric may have a 20,000 pound um, right. battery in the back. So yeah, 20,000. Yeah, 20, yeah for three for a 300 mile truck, you're probably going to need close to a megawatt hour battery pack. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Again, it depends on on you know what the what the use case is, but the downside is then you're just you're using up your efficiency to haul around a uh -huh. bigger battery, and then that's less every pound of batteries, one less pound of cargo. So right. That's another trip you have to make. So it's all about efficiency. We're gonna we're gonna let this uh, let this last truck pull out, and then I think we can hit the road if that's all right with you. Certainly. So this panel, this display here, that's showing us the uh, That's just kind of a prototype status. display that we have in here. Um, but uh, yeah, this is showing us important things like the fuel condition and the state of charge of the batteries. There are batteries in this mm -hmm. vehicle, they're just small. Right, for, for regenerative braking. Right, exactly. All right, I think we're gonna hit the road. You okay temperature-wise? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. So are you an engineer at Toyota or just a truck driver? I am not a truck driver. No, I'm the executive program manager for ah, this program. So okay. I, uh, I've been on working on this for quite some time, but uh, it was useful for me to uh, get a CDL so that I could drive these vehicles. So yeah, it comes in handy. <laughs> it comes in handy. We'll let the uh, light-duty vehicles... Uh, <laughs> A lot quieter than a diesel. It is a lot inside and out, yeah. Now I guess most of what we're hearing is probably the tires and the transmission. Well, and gears. so the, the one downside to having a zero emission vehicle 
is that uh, truck makers didn't used to have to worry about squeak and rattle. Yeah. Uh, because the uh, diesel engine basically covered all of that up. But uh, now it's a it's a bigger concern for them. Uh, so you know, there's a lot there's a lot of squeaks and rattles that have to be damped as uh, as things progress. But they're uh, they're working on it. Uh, but you'll hear you'll hear engine whine and things like that. There's a lot of electric motors for different okay. accessories uh, in here. Things that were normally driven by the uh, you know a pulley uh, on a on a diesel vehicle are driven differently on this vehicle. So I would, I would assume you've got uh, like an electric air compressor for the brakes. For the brakes uh, uh, and air conditioning. Power steering. Power steering. Air conditioning. Yep, those are all uh, those are all electric. Over. So, when uh, when you talk about the overall system weight being uh, comparable to the diesel powertrain, does that also include all those other ancillary components? Yep. Okay. So we're going to get on the highway loop and make a loop here. ACM 35 to hops. Go for hops. Entering the highway loop. Copy that. Entering highway loop. Now this does have a transmission in it, so you will feel a couple shift points. Normally, with a, if we had a trailer, they'd be uh, uh, maybe you wouldn't recognize them quite as much, but. Uh, it is a four-speed transmission in this vehicle. Oh. I'm not going to try and go too fast, so the speed limit, I think, on this portion of the track is 65. It's all right. Normally in a truck like this, there's only one person in it, so right. they figure they skip yeah, out this, the other Yeah, because this, this is a day cab, right. it's not a sleeper, exactly. so. So, of course, one of the challenges with fuel cells is the sources of the hydrogen. Um, and at least, you know, one other company that wants to do fuel cell trucks uh, had plans to build out their own network of hydrogen fueling stations. Um, is that something that Toyota is also investing in, or, or has any plan um, intentions I, I of investing in? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's a it's an important part. But, so we're working with, uh, you know, we've got several partners that we work with. When we we did a, a ten pilot, um, ten truck pilot in California with mm -hmm. Kenworth and with Shell, and a part of that was building some heavy duty. Uh, station infrastructure in California. So I think that the key point is balancing the, you know, the infrastructure with the trucks on the road. It's really kind of a balancing act uh, because you don't As far as the to, areas where they're operating? Right. Yeah. And, and you don't really want one to get a, too much ahead of the other sure. because, you know, it makes, it makes things quite a bit more inefficient. So, um, you know, if there's a bunch of stations around and nobody using them, it's not good for the station operators and vice versa. Uh -huh. So, um, anyway, I think, no, I'm just trying to remember the route. <laughs> I, I don't remember either. No, no, you're fine. Yeah. I just, uh, anyway, I've, I've we, been out here on a number of occasions, but we may, I, yeah, we I don't. may take an extra loop yeah. if, that's, uh, if that's okay with you. Yeah, no problem. Gives you more time, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we, uh, we're, we're we're always investigating what's the best option for, um, maybe this is the right, yeah, I think we're okay. Oh yeah, I think that's where we came in. ACM 35 to Ops, exiting the highway loop. Copy that 35, exiting the highway loop. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think strategically it's got to be a conversation between who the who the you know the fleet operators are, where they operate. Um, you know, strategically they you know may be the type of business where they choose to have a refueling station behind the gates and run everything out of their um, their location, or you know maybe they rely on more public uh, infrastructure if they're. Uh, operating, you know, in, in various types of routes and such. So it really kind of depends, but it really has to be a balancing act and a strong partnership between the vehicle manufacturers and uh, the infrastructure providers. Now, the uh, the pumps for something like this, is it the same pumps that you would use to fuel MRI for, for light-duty vehicles? we use exactly the same okay. uh, pumps, and uh, that gets us around 15 minutes or so for refuel time. Um, we are working on a heavy-duty protocol, which is a larger nozzle that's in development right now, and that will uh, allow us uh, between a five and ten-minute refuel, and then you can hit the road again. Uh, so you're not. You know, so that's a 700 bar system. Yeah. Well, you survived. That's good. I knew I would. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Chris. No problem.